Hello, I'm Alison Baldwin, President of the Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg. On behalf of WMC, I would like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 1 territory and the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene people and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We offer respect and gratitude to the traditional caretakers of the land. After more than a year, WMC is back. We are in the sanctuary of St. Andrew's River Heights United Church in Winnipeg and excited to present our first virtual WMC concert. We are so grateful to the Gail Asper Family Foundation, Johnston Inc. and the Winnipeg Arts Council, along with all the other individual donors who provide funds to allow us to put on these concerts. We are also grateful to Classic 107 and Patterson Outdoor Advertising. This is a free concert, but if you would like to donate, we would appreciate that. There is a donate button on our website at www.wmcwpg.ca. But mostly, we want to reconnect with our community, our audience, our supporters, and present our WMC concert series. This beautiful piano concert is presented by local Manitoban Madeline Hildebrand. She is a past WMC scholarship and WMC McClellan scholarship winner. Her musical studies in New York have been interrupted by the pandemic, so we really are lucky to have her in town. Maddie will introduce her program, but in the meantime, enjoy the concert and celebrate the, the return of music with WMC, and remember that music is a meeting place. Thank you.
My name is Madeline Hildebrand, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much to the Women's Musical Club for hosting this concert. You just heard two preludes from Francois Couperin's treatise on how to play the harpsichord from 1716. So this treatise sort of uh, acts as an instruction manual for harpsichordists of the time. Some of the very funny instructions that I have found in this treatise are things like have somebody warm up your fingers by stretching them for you or pulling them, <laughs> and also the fact that children should never practice on their own to ruin all of the hard work that their teacher has done for them. But there are also wonderful uh, other tips in this treatise, especially um, how to be free with uh, this Baroque music and how to ornament it. The ornaments in these two preludes were a sense of um, showing off that the harpsichord would, uh, the harpsichordist would use to show off their, their technique. Another real show off of the keyboard literature is uh, Sergei Rachmaninoff. And in this sense, he tries to see how many notes he can possibly fit into one piece of music. So I hope you enjoy Opus 39, number five, A to Tableau by Rachmaninoff.
The next two pieces you're about to hear come from the minimalist genre. Philip Glass is a pillar of the minimalist uh, style of music. And in this piece, you will hear an ostinato in the left hand, meaning a repeated motive. And over top of that, he uses chords and arpeggios and tremolos to explore the beautiful key of A flat major. Philip Glass wrote these pieces, his 20 etudes, as an exercise for himself so that he could become a better pianist. And indeed, there are lots of technical aspects of the piece that uh, challenges the pianist. Now, minimal music is repetitive, and in a sense, it's meditative. So if you feel that your mind is wandering, that's a good thing. <laughs> Let the music just wash over you. The uh, composer after that, her name is Anne Southam, and I'm going to be playing Glass Houses number 11. And Anne Southam was actually inspired by Philip Glass's music. So in the Glass Houses piece, you'll hear also an ostinato in the left hand, it's a repetitive seven note motive. And over top of that, she uses different tunes in the key of D flat to explore this motive and um, to weave music around this motive. What I love about Southern's music is that she actually compares her style of co composing to domestic tasks. For example, the act of weaving or crocheting or even doing the dishes is comparable to this glass houses. There's a repetitive motion, and as soon as you, for instance, drop a stitch, <laughs> you might be thrown off. So it's a playful idea, and I hope you enjoy this minimalist set.
The last set of pieces are by Vitislava Kaprilova and Johannes Brahms. Kaprilova was a Czech composer and she lived only a short time from 1915 until 1939. Even though she died at such an, a young age, she had a prolific amount of repertoire though. She composed primarily for uh, the orchestra and I find in her April Preludes that there is a, a rich orchestral sound. You might hear timpani uh, tremolos and rumbles uh, and then flutes soaring above that. And finally, Brahms Opus 76, Eight Clavier Stücke will end the program. I will be playing numbers one, two, four, and five. Brahms is a pillar of the Romantic era and his music is lush and uh, intense and introspective and big at times. Um, these pieces are special to me. I love the first one, number one, as he presented this piece to his friend Clara Schumann on her birthday. So I hope you enjoy this set by Kaprilova and the final pieces by Johannes Brahms. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this concert and thanks again to the Women's Musical Club for having me.
What a wonderful performance, Maddie. Thank you. We wish you well in your career and hope that you can turn, return to New York soon. WMC is presenting a relatively newly formed trio, the Zyra Trio, which consists of Gregory Lewis violin, David Leanne Roberts cello, and Paul Williamson piano. They are all past WMC scholarship and WMC McClellan scholarship winners, and all are pursuing their musical studies at prestigious North American universities. This will take place as a virtual concert on April 26th, and we look forward to you joining us. WMC is also hosting a McClellan Winners fundraiser dinner virtually on May the 6th. We would love to have your company. Details are on our website at www.wmcwpg. So see you on the April 26th and good night.